Here's your too long didn't watch summary. Citadel Securities, a huge market maker, recently filed a lawsuit challenging the SEC's decision to allow a new trade order called the D-Limit Order. The D-Limit Order allows for trades made on a slower connection to the exchange to be executed when share prices are extraordinarily unstable. It also aims to eliminate the chance for big hedge funds and other players to make money by sniping trade prices because they have a faster direct connection to the exchange. The case just had its oral argument last Monday, October 25th, and we'll hear from the court possibly in the next few weeks about whether the SEC had the authority to approve this delimit order. If the court affirms the decision and rules in favor of the SEC, then the delimit order will be implemented, likely dealing a blow to the big market makers who have been taking advantage of their unequal relationship with the exchanges. Stick around to learn more about what the delimit actually is and what this case is all about. I've seen lots of folks talking about the recent hearing in the lawsuit brought by market maker Citadel Securities against the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. I want to talk about what this lawsuit's all about and what the result could be depending on who wins. I'll point out first that I'm a lawyer with a lot of general practice experience, some administrative law experience in the labor law field, and a tiny bit of time in front of appeals court, but I am not a finance lawyer. I'm also not a financial expert, and I really have no idea what any of this means for stock in the market or the economy. I'm just here to help you all understand the background of this case, what the case means, and how the legal process works here. With all that being said, let's talk about Citadel versus the SEC. Now here's what this lawsuit is all about. Last year, the SEC, which is a federal government agency that regulates the stock market and trading and everything related to that, approved a new type of stock trade order called the D-Limit Order. The way this works is that the exchange, where the trading actually takes place, has a computer program, artificial intelligence basically, that looks at incoming buy and sell orders. It then predicts from these orders that the price is about to change pretty rapidly and temporarily turns on a special type of order called a D-Limit Order. If the price is unstable when that order comes in, the share price of the D-Limit Order will be adjusted automatically to meet the price and not miss out because the price changed too quickly. Why does this even matter? Well, because currently bigger traders like large hedge funds are able to swoop in and trade the stock and move the price while your order is still making it to the exchange for execution. They have a better connection to the exchange because they're such high frequency traders. They beat you by milliseconds and you miss out on the share price for that order. Imagine being in line at a dance club. You've been standing there for hours and you're next in line finally. The bouncer opens the door for you to go in, but while you're reaching for your ID in your pocket, out of nowhere some rich dude flies through and gets into the door. The bouncer closes the door and says, sorry, the club's full. That time that you're reaching for your ID here, that's just that slower connection to the exchange that the average retail investor has through your brokers like Webull and Robinhood. That rich guy is the hedge fund or the market maker like Citadel with their much faster and much more automated connections to the exchange. They're able to pick up on your delay and snatch those stocks at the price you're trying to get, basically skipping the line and stealing your spot. That's where this concept of market latency arbitrage comes in. The rich guys aren't just doing this once. They're making money constantly on it, or so the SEC believes. They're looking for the microseconds where your orders are waiting to execute and snipes those prices back and forth. Your orders don't make it in or they end up executing at a higher buy cost or a lower sell price because the big guys got in and made the price move before your order could execute. All because they have a direct and faster automated connection to the exchange to make those trades. So according to the SEC, this whole thing is about making it more fair for slower retail traders to have a shot at share prices when things are extra volatile. Where currently the hedge funds and bigger traders get a huge advantage. We're talking microseconds here. But the financial advantage is huge, like $5 billion a year lost to everybody else type of huge. But with the delimit order, you can say to the exchange, look, if things are crazy, hold my spot for a second, okay? I'm coming through the door. When the share price is unstable, as determined by artificial intelligence and the computer program, it'll make sure it holds your place in line during those few microseconds so your order can go through and the rich dude can't make money stealing your spot. And all of this is really only able to happen for about 5 to 10 seconds per day, according to the SEC. But those are the times where a fraction of a second can mean millions of dollars for everyone. That sounds pretty good for you, the average retail trader, right? 
and really bad if you're a big hedge fund or market maker making easy cash on a speedy internet connection, right? And that brings us to the lawsuit, which of course is brought by the giant market maker, Citadel Securities, who was allegedly the big dog doing this market latency arbitrage kind of stuff. As you can imagine, Citadel is not a fan of the delimit order, so they filed this lawsuit to get a federal court to stop that SEC decision that allows it. When a federal agency makes a decision, the people affected by it can file a lawsuit with a federal court to ask the court to review the decision and strike it down. In this case, Citadel is asking the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, that's the second level of federal court system, one step below the Supreme Court, to review this SEC decision on the delimit order and throw it out. The main argument for Citadel is that the SEC went way outside the bounds of the law when they made their decision, basically that the SEC overstepped their authority. Now think back to middle school civics. Remember that schoolhouse rock song about how a bill becomes a law? I'm not going to sing it here, it'd be terrible. But Congress, the legislative branch, makes the law, of course, and the executive branch, the president and all the federal agencies, including the SEC, carries out the law and it has to work within the bounds of it. Congress passed the Securities Exchange Act way back in 1934, which created the SEC and gave it the power it has to regulate the stock market. The SEC can't go above and beyond that authority that Congress gave it to it in the law and any other relevant laws that have passed since throughout the years. The judicial branch, the courts, they exist to make sure the SEC doesn't do that. So we've got Citadel here asking the federal court to review what the SEC did and make sure that it didn't overstep the power that Congress gave it to it back in the day. It's a party for all three branches of government. That's a lot to take in, right? But you just got a full introduction to federal administrative law in just one minute, so congratulations on that. Now, appealing a federal agency decision is a much different process than your normal lawsuit. You know, I've talked in other videos about different stock lawsuits and patent lawsuits. It's a totally different game here. It's a much more direct process, and it has fewer steps. Each side started with the ability to file documents called briefs, and no, I'm not talking about your tidy whities here, but briefs, documents where each side has written their arguments down about why they should win the case. Citadel wrote about why the SEC overstepped its legal authority, and the SEC lawyers wrote their brief about why the SEC had the authority to approve the new trade order. On top of this, other groups were allowed to file what are known as amicus briefs, which are basically arguments from other affected people or experts who support different sides of the case. We saw amicus briefs here with arguments from a variety of exchanges and market players, including the New York Stock Exchange, adding to the arguments by Citadel and the SEC. Citadel and the SEC were also given opportunities to submit additional briefs to add to their arguments and respond to the different amicus briefs to complete their written arguments. So you basically have a giant pile of paperwork from both sides and a couple other groups to form that argument. Then, instead of a full trial like you'd normally see in a standard lawsuit, there's an oral argument. That's just a simple hearing where the lawyers present their argument to a panel of three appeals court judges, and the judges get a chance to ask questions and clarify things from the attorneys. Now, that's what happened on Monday, October 25th. You can watch the full hearing on YouTube if that's what you're into. I mean, I am about that life. And the link to that is in the video description below. So this case, like most appeals of federal agency decisions, was a bunch of papers filed with arguments, then an oral argument, and then eventually we'll see a ruling. That's the process here. Now, at the hearing on the 25th, we heard what the core issues of the case really were about. Citadel argued that it wasn't really that latency arbitrage thing that was causing stock prices to move too quickly for orders to come in. They're saying it was just the natural order of things, that when lots of orders come in all at once, prices are going to move. They're saying that sometimes prices go crazy because simply lots of people are making trades, and that's it not some sort of predatory trading that they're being accused of. Citadel also argued that this new order type violates the Exchange Act by hindering trades that were legally sent. The law says the SEC can't slow down trades like the D-limit order does by holding that trade window open for a few microseconds. Now, on the other side, the SEC argued that they did what was fair for investors, that their job is to make sure that securities are traded fairly. They said the whole reason the D-limit order was approved was to stop high-frequency traders like Citadel from engaging in predatory trading practices that they had by basically stealing opportunities for fair trade. The SEC says they have proof that this market latency arbitrage is happening and that the delimit order would solve that issue at the most volatile times of the market. On top of all of that, the SEC had the support of several large hedge funds like Goldman Sachs and T. Rowe Price for the decision, so Citadel's argument that it would hurt the market makers or harm the hedge funds is put into doubt right there. 
From a legal standpoint, this case is less about whether the delimit order works to resolve that market latency disadvantage. That's a little part of the fight here, though. But the big question is whether the SEC actually has the legal authority in the law to approve such a solution that creates a speed bump for the bigger traders for about 10 seconds a day. The core issue here is what is more important than the law? What part of the law applies more? That the SEC has the ability to regulate the market so it's fair for everyone, regardless of their internet connection or their direct relationship to the exchanges? Or is it that the SEC can't do anything that will hinder a, quote, immediate and automatically executable, unquote, trade that otherwise is legitimate? But the interpretation of immediate is pretty open when we're talking about microseconds. Is an intentional trading delay, a speed bump stop like this, a conflict with the definition of immediate? Well, that's what the judges now have to decide. So who do I think is going to win? Well, that's really tough to say because, well, I'm not the judges. On one hand, it's very common for the courts to give some leeway to federal agencies to make decisions when they have a reason justified in the law, like the SEC does here, preventing predatory practices and maintaining a fair and free market. However, there are some legal details here that I didn't go into that will matter in what the judges think, like how the SEC previously interpreted relevant parts of the law. Citadel made an argument that the SEC wasn't consistent when they denied a similar proposal a few months before. There's also cases from the past that the lawyers on both sides cited in their briefs that may influence the judge one way or another. And I won't go into those because it's too minute details. There's a lot of information here for the judges to look at as they decide the case. So it's hard to say who I think is going to win because I can't tell what the judges view as the most persuasive arguments. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Now, what happens when the ruling comes out? If the judges affirm or they approve the SEC's decision here, then the delimit order will be able to continue being implemented. Of course, Citadel could appeal the case to the Supreme Court, but who knows if the Supreme Court cares. But that would delay the whole thing until next year if they did take it. But if the judges overturn the SEC decision, that could just kill the delimit order concept entirely, or the SEC could re-review the decision and try to find a better reason for approving it. D depends on what the court says about it. So we'll have to read that opinion when it comes out. There could also be some bigger impacts if the SEC loses here, too. You know, if the delimit order is found to be above the scope of the law, then the SEC might not have much power to stop this market latency arbitrage practice. It might take an act of Congress to fix that. Let's be honest, that's not going to happen. At the same time, if the court comes back and says the SEC does have that power, then the SEC might look at other ways to balance market access better and get more involved in stopping some of these monster-sized entities from taking advantage of retail investors. But then again, the same SEC passed on the opportunity to take any action at all over the Robin Hood GameStop and AMC fiasco that happened earlier this year. But a court ruling either way can have long-lasting effects on what the SEC believes it can and can't do when it comes to regulating the stock market. So this ruling matters more than just the delimit order itself. Either way, it can take several weeks to get a ruling after oral argument, so we may be waiting a bit to see what happens here. According to this circuit court's rules, the judges may have already made their decision later that day after the oral argument, but somebody has to write the formal written opinion, which takes some time. We'll learn more in November when the court reports the status of the case or we get the opinion, and I'll have more on that whenever we see the ruling. We can talk through the implications of the results here. Do you think that the delimit order is fair? Tell me what you think in the comments. We're also chatting about this and other trading and stock law topics, including the recent craziness with ShibaCoin in the Shark Invested Waters Discord server. The link to that server is in the description below, and I hope you'll join us there. If you like this type of legal coverage, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates as I put them out. And do me a favor, just share the video with a friend if you could. I say it every time, and I mean it every time. Be sure to always do your own full due diligence on any of your trades and make good informed financial decisions, and I'll see you all next time.